Okay, welcome everyone um, for this uh, uh, library session for the uh, Intelligent Q Estimating Research Project. Uh, glad that everyone could be here. Uh, the work was done by uh, uh, Dr. Abbas Rashidi and uh, his team with uh, uh, Susant Tiwari and Bob Chamberlain and uh, Mikola Markovic. And uh, they've come up with some, some interesting results and uh, would like to present them today. So uh, I will turn the time now to uh, Dr. Rashidi. So thank you, Kevin, for the introduction and good morning, everyone. And thank you for your time. So this is the final presentation for our project. So. First of all, I just want to thank all TAC members and technical committee for providing feedback and help during the process, especially Scott and Jamie, who is not with us today. So without any hesitance, so Susan has prepared a presentation for us. Susan, can you please go ahead and share your screen with us? Yeah, Professor. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Susan Tiwari. I'm a graduate student at University of Utah. I'm working with Dr. Abbas Rasidi and Dr. Nikola Markovic, along with Robert Chamberlain for this project. I want to thank you all for being here today. And today I will explain about the progress we made in this project on intelligent Q length estimation on ramp using computer vision and machine learning algorithm. I'm thankful to every members of the tech team for their great advice and feedback during this project time period. Their feedback has been very instrumental in this project. I'm also very grateful to Scott for helping us in data collection. I would like to explain the importance, uh, start by explaining the importance of project. Next, I'll review the existing sensor used to collect traffic sensor, traffic data, and discuss the benefit of vision-based method in comparison. I will then provide a detailed explanation of developed vision-based method. Furthermore, I will explain about the data collection process and discuss the system performance based on the collected data. Additionally, I'll elaborate on implementation plan and outline on the potential areas for future research. To elaborate the importance of this project, uh, let's see what are the benefits of ramp metering. Uh, ramp metering helps to reduce overall freeway travel time by preventing shock waves and collision during merging. Accurate measurement of traffic parameter enable more informed decision, facilitates the optimized traffic management plan, especially for ramp and highway intersection. Additionally, using camera as a traffic sensor provides a safer workplace for worker as they are situated above the pavement and can be easily accessed with maintenance vehicle, making them more visible to the incoming traffic. On the right side, we can see worker installing uh, in-road sensor and maintaining the camera system. We can see maintaining and installing a camera system is much safer to them. However, to ensure the successful implementation of ramp metering, collection of traffic information through the use of sensor is essential. If we see sensors, they can be broadly classified into two categories, in-road sensor and over-the-road sensor. And this categorization is based on the sensor placement, whether it is located within the pavement or above the pavement area. 
indoor sensors are embedded within the pavement, like induction loop, pneumatic tubes, seismic sensor, while over the road sensor like radar, waves, LiDAR, image processing, lies either above the pavement or at a certain distance from the road surface. And induction loop are the most commonly used sensor among all the sensor which were, which were mentioned previously, according to the traffic detector handbook. However, they face challenges in providing accurate data during congestion, and um, they have problem in detecting a smaller vehicle. Multiple loops are also needed for even for monitoring a single lane. Additionally, they cost more to install and maintain, and cutting the payment is necessary for installation, causing disruption to the traffic services during this process. Indoor sensors have limitations that can be effectively addressed by using the over-the-road sensor. We have numerous over-the-road sensors offering a viable alternative to indoor sensor. However, a significant drawback of many such sensors is they require multiple units designed to capture only specific type of data. For instance, we can see the arrangement of radar sensor as shown in figure A is dedicated to detecting vehicle count while configuration shown in figure B is dedicated to detecting the queue length. In contrast, image processing using traffic sensor or traffic videos can overcome these limitations by generating multiple areas of data using a single sensor. This approach also allows for more comprehensive and versatile data capturing uh, capacity without the need for deploying several individual sensors. The previous statement was also supported by Federal Highway. The handbook confirms that this technology can effectively monitor multiple lanes and detection zone as it is easier to modify for different detection zone. Furthermore, it has capacity to generate a comprehensive area of data and can detect a wider area by employing a coordinated camera system. The handbook also mentioned few disadvantages of image processing, like uh, they, uh, there might, we might need to close the lane uh, to clean the dust and snow from the camera. However, the recent camera models with built-in wiper have eliminated this need or this disadvantage. Additionally, handbook also states that during inclement weather, such as rain, fog, and snow, along with the occlusion and day-to-night transition, can reduce accuracy. However, the implementation of recent, uh, recent deep learning framework has already overcome these scenarios as shown in figure. Furthermore, handbook uh, mentioned that uh, nighttime requires uh, street lighting and recommends a camera height, of, camera height mounting of 30 to 50 feet for optimal result. However, as shown in image on the right side, with the retraining of modern computer vision using a proper data set, we can easily detect vehicle even at a night time without proper street lighting and when the camera is positioned far from the street. Furthermore, it mentioned that some camera models are susceptible to strong winds. However, the recent model can recent camera model can easily withstand wind speed up to 150 miles per hour. This table presents a comprehensive summary of data capturing capabilities of both in-road sensor and over-the-roadway sensor. The data has been sourced from the traffic detector handbook, where asterisk indi indicates the true and a hyphen indicates the false. It is observed that image processing exhibits capacity to capture all kinds of data except uh, the vehicle weight and Excel information. However, the recent advancement in deep learning framework since 2012 have demonstrated its ability to easily detect vehicle excels and type even using computer vision. Because of this, image processing images is highly promising traffic sensor technology capable of generating a diverse range of data. Therefore, image processing can be considered as viable option for traffic sensors. This is, this frame, this is our framework and the framework consists of the four different components. First one is data processing. Second is object detection and tracking. Another one is vision-based tracking and the, and, and the vision-based tracking and queue-based tracking along with the flow prediction model. In the first stage, uh, video is processed and vehicle on the highway are removed from analysis. We only need to analyze the vehicle in the ramp. So we have to do some pre-processing. Second stage involves object detection and tracking where detection algorithm identify object and recognition algorithm classify them into different classes like car, truck, uh, even motorcycle. We can make different classes as for our need. 
once the object detection and recognition reach that predefined threshold, then they are integrated into robust tracking algorithm. We need a tracking algorithm so that we can continuously track detected object in order to find the queuing time. For this scenario, we have used YOLO V4, you only look once algorithm is our object detection framework. In the third stage, how vision-based tracking is performed on each detected object and queuing parameter such as queue length and queuing time are estimated. Additionally, queuing graph uh, um, based parameter estimation is also utilized to enhance the result of vision based framework. Finally, data from the queue parameter estimation is collected and integrated with flow prediction model to anticipate the future delays. To train and develop the uh, to train the develop framework, data from the traffic camera videos was obtained with the help of UDOT uh, Traffic Operation Center. Data collection process uh, took uh, took place at four specific location: uh, 10,400 south northbound, 11,200 south northbound, 500 south northbound, and Big Street northbound. These locations were carefully selected by considering factors such as camera height, orientation, and visibility of ramps. And the chosen location ensure the optimal condition for data collection and analysis. Uh, at first, we explore the base YOLO model as object detection and tracking. However, the base YOLO model uh, was not able to detect the vehicle with seasonal variation in poor lighting condition uh, and like snow and rain time. Hence, it is very essential to retrain the model until it achieves the accuracy in different conditions that might occur in a real field. To enhance the model performance under varying lighting condition, we have incorporated frames with different lighting scenarios, which consist of diverse colors and intensity levels. Additionally, the, these are the training set, and the, the training data set includes variation with a uh, lighting condition, also um, also the vehicle condition. You can see, as you can see in the slide. By including such diverse and representative sample, we aim to pro improve the model robustness and generalization capacity to handle the real world scenarios. Again, seasonal changes in addition to lighting variation also present significant challenges when we have to implement this project or this uh, framework in real world. To address this issue effectively, a data set consisting with diverse seasonal variations such as rain and snow and occurring under different lighting conditions like snow at the night, snow at the day, uh, and the traffic condition scenario was gathered. And the two, we have totally gathered almost 8,200 images and labeled them using label IMG software for the retraining of our object detection and uh, object detection framework. Once the model has been trained to achieve robust performance, it must it's undergo different. testing in various challenging conditions that may sure. potentially occur in real world scenarios. So we have gathered and assessed the model framework under different environmental conditions, including normal conditions, sunset conditions, consistent time period, nighttime scenarios, as well as during rain and snowfall, which is presented in this slide. Not, there is a question, sorry for interrupting. Here we can see the video result at 10,400 south northbound. Uh, here, uh, here we can see that framework is able to detect and track object with better accuracy. Uh, in this slide, we can see framework uh, assign a unique ID to each object and gather information such as queuing time of each object. Here you can see and the car means so the class of vehicle me? and 1822 means the unique ID for that vehicle and slash something second means total queuing time from entering point to the exiting point. point. And I want to show you the lighting condition in this video demonstration is quite good for object detection and tracking. Uh, video is a bit longer, so I'll fast forward and show you. Here you can see during congested time period also, it is detecting vehicle with better accuracy. Susan, can you hear me?
if you have any questions, please let me know. It seems that Robert Paul Chamberlain was, has one. She's and on. while previous our previous video shows the successful demonstration of framework during congested time period and uh, good proper lighting condition. Here, same framework and is utilized to detect the vehicle in nighttime and also congested time period. Uh, we can see in this video, like uh, there will be degrees, uh, decrease in natural light intensity. Uh, uh, so like even the na natural light goes on decreasing, uh, like Federal Highway says, when there is a light transition, it might not work well, but we have trained our algorithm to work well in such scenarios also. And framework detect uh, demonstrate better result in object detection and tracking until the queue is completely dissipated. Uh, let me fast forward and show you how natural light intensity decreases. Here you can see it is becoming darker and darker, but framework is still doing better in detecting vehicle with better accuracy. And there might be some missing vehicle in these scenarios, but the number of missing vehicle is quite low. Here you can see this vehicle is getting missed from the tra tracking. And you can see and almost uh, this is the night time where Q has al almost dissipated and our framework has de demonstrated a, a better accuracy till that point. We have also successfully processed a longer video, approximately one and a half hour duration, duration at 10,400 south northbound. Uh, during the process, we collected information such as arriving rate, average delay, average queue, and exit rate. The arriving rate and exit rate are measured in 100 units per hour. Uh, this data will enable us to generalize the trend of incoming queues uh, and make approximate prediction of anticipated queue pattern. Like uh, based on arriving and arriving pattern or arriving rate, we can say like a uh, queue is going to be developed uh, almost like in this manner, and that will be very useful for the team. And we have also distributed the range of delay into different categories: uh, zero to one minute, one to two minute, two to three minute, three to four minute, and more than four minute. From the data, we can observe that 34% of the vehicle experience a delay of less than one minute. And the average delay for these vehicle falling in zero to one minute category is 31 second is shown in the chart. Similarly, we can see the detail about percentage and average delay for each category. And this is very important for the team because like they don't want a much more, more percent of vehicle to wait more than four minutes. And even they can see it's a 263 second means four minutes something second is an average delay falling on that category. In addition to utilizing object detection and tracking, tracking, we have implemented a queuing graph based method to estimate the parameter related to vehicle ramp dynamics. Queuing graph comprises two curves. One is arrival curve, which is shown by the black solid line. And another is departure curve, which is shown by the red solid line. Both curves are cumulative plot against time and the area between them represent the cumulative uh, queuing time experience within the system. And at the point where the cumulative arrival and departure curve intersect, uh, shown by the black dot, if you can see here, here, the, here is a queue dissipation point, which basically means there is no vehicle in the ramp, or the absence of vehicle in the ramp. And the vertical distance between this curve provides the queue length value at any given time t. That means if we find a vertical distance between these curves, then we can say this there are this much car in the ramp, while horizontal distance uh, correspond to the queuing time experienced by vehicle V. Furthermore, maximum queue length can also be determined by, by finding the longest vertical distance, while maximum queuing time is obtained from the longest horizontal distance. In summary, this approach also facilitates the estimation of key parameter related to queuing to analyze the vehicle arrival and departure pattern over time. And one main difference with the queuing system is we don't need to continuously track vehicle. We just have to track them at entry point and the exit point. 
in this context, like we, I have compared the data capturing capacity of algorithm, and here you can we can see the uh, plot for the ground truth shown by the red solid line and the green solid line. Red one is for the entering vehicle ground truth, and the green is for exiting vehicle ground truth, and blue dotted line is for entering vehicle um, captured by our algorithm, and exiting vehicle is uh, sorry black line is for exiting vehicle captured by our our algorithm. And the ground truth was um, observed manually by myself. So we can see there is a very closest alignment between ground truth and our frame of data capturing capacity. And we try to we also try to explore the queuing pattern, how the queuing pattern changes when there is changes in exit rate or signal timing. In this slide, we can see the graph developed using queuing graph and the distribution of delay using normal exit rate uh, on the right side. Uh, normal exit rate means uh, the simply the exit rate which uh, which was recorded in the video provided to us so we consider that the normal exit rate and we can in this scenario we can see none of the vehicle faces delay more than two minutes however in in next case who when we have degrees our uh, exit rate to the 80 percent of the normal time then the average queuing time of the system is increased uh, which is also seen by the increased green area between the curve in this case 20 percent of the vehicle has face delay of two to three minutes in contrast when the exit rate is increased uh, the total queuing time of the system decreases and all the vehicle will face delay of less than one minute and this analysis aligns with the general intuition that when general intuition that when exit rate increases vehicle have to wait for certain uh, so, shorter duration this allows the ramp metering to, team to adjust the signal timing in such a way that every queuing time faced by the vehicle on ramp will be less than four minutes while maintaining the traffic flow in the main line suppose vehicle here faces the delay less than one minute so they can decrease the exit rate in such a way that vehicle can wait a bit longer in the ramp around four minutes this will help us to maintain the flow in the main line without being disturbed by the merging vehicle. And here is a successful demonstration of framework uh, in analysis of video for, from five, 500 south northbound. And in this um, demonstration also, we can see uh, the framework provides unique ID to each vehicle and shows the class and total queuing time from the entry point to the exit point. Uh, you can see any vehicles. Let's see this for the car number 3191. Uh, this is its unique ID and slash five second, six second is a skewing time from entry to exit point. And similarly, uh, this is another video uh, showing the successful demonstration of our framework um, for parameter estimation at 11,400 south northbound. videos are a bit longer so i can fast forward and show it and you can see a camera is a, a little bit in shaky motion in this case so but it's, uh, but the framework is doing still better and here we can see the result of object detection and tracking on big street northbound and uh, as per our information the third lane is not for the ramp so we have excluded it from our analysis And up to this point, we have seen the video processing and analysis of RAM. Uh, however, to reduce the total queuing time, it is essential to predict the anticipated delays. So hence, we have employed the different model, including linear and nonlinear model, as well as machine learning model, to achieve the, uh, sorry, sorry, to predict the arrival rate. The table shows the value of different hyperparameter that need to be tuned up for optimal prediction. And among these all models, random forest gives a better prediction model for us. Let me show the result of random forest. Here you can we can observe two cumulative graphs, and both of them are arrival curve. Uh, one is generated from ground truth, which is shown by the blue line, and another is generated from the predicted model, orange line. And the random forest model achieved nearly 94% accuracy. You can see the error of 5.69% uh, in predicting the arrival pattern. 
you know, what we did uh, in this case was we tried to then capture the data from different RAM and train our algorithm and infer that algorithm using that model. We make, made an inference for 600 seconds, which is almost 10 minutes. Uh, how the and we also have ground truth for that time period and we compare our model prediction with that ground truth and we can see using random forest that is the closest approximation and once we can predict this arrival rate or arrival pattern with a, a certain accuracy we can determine the exit rate from single timing enabling us to forecast the total cumulative delay uh, and the average delay using Oh, that's not good. Can you hear me now? Yes. Is my screen on? Uh, no, we don't see your screen yet. Oh, sorry, I lost my. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah, I can repeat this one. Uh, here we can see the observe the uh, cumulative arrival curve, two cumulative arrival curve in the graph. One is generated from the ground truth, uh, which is uh, shown by the blue line, and another is from the predicted uh, model, or uh, which is uh, which is random forest for our case, orange line. And the random forest model achieved ninety four percent accuracy almost, and you can see the error of five point six nine percent in predicting the arrival pattern and once uh, the pre uh, arrival pre prediction is completed we can determine the exit rate from signal timing enabling us to forecast the total cumulative delay and average delay using queuing method and after calculating the average delay time if it surpasses a predefined threshold by a certain limit then we can develop a warning system as you can see the flashing red frame here in this video and it will inform the team to adjust the signal timing. It will like, we can uh, infer this as a like, uh, there is going, Q is going to be developed. So we have to increase our exit rate, something like that. Even we can add sound to these videos. And in addition to framework, uh, camera quality also affect the performance of vision-based method. Here, features such as built-in wiper 30 to 60 frames per second and um, video capturing capacity wide detection range in cameras remote control with pan tilt and zoom function and resistant to the adverse conditions like in high speed wind and high high temperature and even night vision camera with almost 300 meter range uh, it is important to note that any camera with uh, such a specification or equivalent to these features is suitable for this framework uh, to work in different challenging conditions, even in the night time, even in the snow time. In addition to camera quality, placement of camera is also very crucial in capturing the appropriate field of view. Hence, we have utilized external tool name is JBSG tool to find the optimum location of camera. Let me walk you through the steps to design the height, location, and orientation, and angle of tilt. Uh, this is a demo uh, demonstrated on RAMP SR77. First of all, we can import the map on RAMP using provided latitude and longitude. And this is a built-in feature within the tool, as shown in the slide. And in the second step, we have to fix the camera model. And they also provide some camera model. If uh, we have a camera, if they have a camera model matches to our current camera model, then it is okay to choose that one. Or we can enter the specification of camera model to create our own list. It's shown in the left box. And once um, the camera model is selected, place the camera at certain location and rotate it to orient properly toward the ramps. And you will find there will be certain dead zones um, in front of camera always of certain radius here you can see i have indicated with yellow circle and we we hence the camera need to be placed at a certain distance from the exit line to ensure that they, they, these dead zones are not located near the critical areas or they should be uh, away from the exit line towards the main highway not towards the ramp once the dead zone problem is solved 
then we can find or we can measure the distance from the exit line. And this provides the location for the camera post. And the installation height can be found in the left box. And the angle of field also can be determined in, in the result box. In addition to determining the location, tilt, and height of camera, we also can easily model a desired object at any speed. Here we can see I have model car at around 80 MPS. If vehicle is flowing at certain speed, then we can um, keep that parameter in the tool and it will so say us whether it will be get detected or not uh, at this distance, something. Uh, it is so flexible in terms of modeling. And additionally, we can also model disturbances like trees, which can be very helpful for real field, uh, mimicking the real field scenarios. Uh, at 10,400 south northbound, we have trees uh, which ha have disturbed us in uh, uh, in few of frame in few frames while using this method. Finally, installation drawing also can be extracted from the software. From here, we can easily determine the height of camera, also the tilt of cameras. And this is very useful for the team, uh, like the installation drawing can be useful while installing the camera in the field scenarios. Additionally, we also have provided rating to all 37 ramps located in I-15 section. And rating was done as poor, fair, good, and excellent. And the rating of all ramps were included in the final report. I have kept a sample of rating here. Among the implementation plan, the computer vision demanded significant computation resources. Hence, cloud computing is recommended. We have two options for cloud computing. One is without skipping frame, and which cost around $1,872 per signal per year. And another one is with skipping frames, which cost $1,112.80 per signal per year. Skipping frame means like um, like we have 30 frames per second, uh, means in one second we'll, we have 30 frames. We don't need to analyze every other frame. We can skip like I, I'm analyzing frame one and I, I can skip frame two and I can use frame three um, like that. Doing this, uh, we might have to use the um, computational power with lesser GPU and this will decrease the uh, operating cost. Therefore, the second option is more feasible and affordable, and hence if this is a recommended choice. One of the greatest limitations of this st study is accuracy of the framework drops when there are curved ramps. And here you can see it might be because of the occlusion of vehicle from other vehicle or due to the steeper curves. And to overcome the limitation of curve section, we can extend this work using coordinated camera system. If we have two camera, then we can easily co cover the curve section. And additionally, a coordinated ramp metering system can be implemented. This enhances the ramp metering, making it more dynamic, optimizing the ramp performance further. And moreover, deep learning models have higher precision and broader applicability in predicting traffic flow. This prediction model is not only useful for ramp, but also can be implemented for highways or any arterial state. This is very crucial to crucial step to develop a proactive strategies to optimize the performance of traffic light. Furthermore, there has been significant progress in developing deeper, lighter, very lighter uh, deep learning frameworks like YOLO NAS recently, uh, which can be effectively imp implemented uh, on edge computing devices. Thank you all for being here. We are ready to address any inquiries you may have. Thank you, Susant. Uh, before uh, we open for questions, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, if you're interested in getting uh, uh, continuing education credits for this uh, hour, uh, give me a, an email and uh, I will uh, send you a certificate. Thanks. So, Sean, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, and you, you're unmuted. Uh, you're, you're muted. <laughs> I have muted myself. So. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. You would think that because I'm on the research team, I would know all this, but I don't. Um, uh, one is, um, 
when you're training the model for adverse conditions, did you use images from the ramps themselves or just random images from anywhere you might have gotten them? Yeah, actually we had to train the algorithm to, do, to detect the vehicle in those conditions. So it doesn't need, uh, need to have, sorry. So it doesn't have to be from the ramp. So we can train vehicle on any places. So we never use these uh, frames from these uh, video. Okay. So one good thing is it will help us to make our model more generalizable and can be implemented anywhere without the without having the problem of overfitting issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you remind us uh, approximately how many images you had to look at and manually tag for each condition? For each condition, like uh, around 500 images, uh, at least 500 images. And if we have more images, uh, if any, if we, if there are more images available on the internet, we have used that. So all around, we have a, added around 8,200 images to the framework. Mm -hmm. And Bob, one comment is that yeah, we had to manually label several images at the beginning, but it's a one-time thing. So once we have it in the system, so we don't need to repeat it for different RAMs. So it's a one-time thing for mm -hmm. the entire system. Yeah, cool. Um, and another question on, on a different topic uh, relating to the cloud computing. Um, did, did you utilize that during this research or are you suggesting that, you know, were you not to implement this system, that would be the way to do the image processing and queue and delay calculations? Uh, yeah, we have never utilized uh, in this system, but like uh, based on the computational resources required, it is recommended like this, this option are feasible. And like we even we can find out the computational resources uh, from my PC and compare them with cloud and we can find out this most can do better processing for this case scenario. So, okay. All right. Um, and in, in the case where you, one was to use cloud computing for this is the processing instantaneous or is there any sort of delay in the essentially receipt of delay and queuing information from real time uh, based on the other cloud computing activities i think it should be in instantaneous there should not be much more delay. Actually, the cloud computing also depends sometimes on our internet speed, so. Okay, great, thank you. So Bob, it could be almost real time, even not 100% near real time with like one, two seconds delay. And the reason we didn't need cloud computing because we were working on a kind of one hour, two hour long videos, but if it's a kind of continuous thing for the entire day, then we will need those resources. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I've got a question just about uh, the vehicle detection. Um, so you're able to detect unique each unique vehicle uh, how accurate is that it, did you ever find that uh, it labels this i don't know two vehicles with the same id as or, or any issues if you have an upstream and a downstream camera uh confusing vehicles yeah that there is my possibility of id switching problem and that mostly occurred during the night time but in the daytime, like our tracking algorithm uses two methods. Like it also try to detect the location of object from one frame to other frame. And so it will also, it will also use the feature descriptor such as color of the car and also the orientation, everything else. So in the nighttime, it might not see the color of the car, but also based on location, we can easily, the, the, uh, deep shot tracking algorithm tries to avoid the I ID switching problem, but there are few instances where uh, ID switching have been occurred. I will say that. So, Sultan, can you give us a kind of approximate range out of 100 cases? How many? It's not like around 
eight to nine cases on a, on a night time only. Just on a night time, but on average, on the entire data set, it would be probably less than two, three, right? Out of 100. Yeah, Professor. And thus, these are switch ID based on location so that both of the vehicles are in same location and uh, we can assume that they are almost facing the same queuing time because they try to level off while they are waiting in ramp. So. There's a question from Troy Torgeston in the chat. Let me see. Uh, did you see the issue with truck and trailer having two IDs? Yeah, one case uh, I found was when the when there was a truck which was shipping car, we see multiple IDs in that case scenario. And sometimes, yeah, trailer might have some two IDs, but um, after retraining, that issue was solved. But the vehicle, which we, which were used for shipping multiple cars, uh, we still have multiple IDs for that vehicle. I guess I have answered your question. You know, I, I'm not sure I followed uh, your answer. Do you know, um, Sushant, like what fraction of tractor trailer combinations are identified as one vehicle versus two? Do you have a sense of that? Mm, actually, there are very few instances of source vehicle in our video processing. So like, um, I don't have ha accurate number for that, but I will say like in the very few instances, like uh, there have been two ID, I, I have observed that, that's correct. Even for the U-Hull, U-Box, sometimes it tries to identify car and truck on the back. Well, I have a question just for everybody <laughs> on the meeting. I know um, UDOT has recently you know, engaged in a managed motorways project, and I am just wanted to ask anyone who might be familiar with that whether they think this technology uh, would be useful in that project um, or could be used as a trial or a a test case. So that's a that's a general question, and um, any, anyone can answer. <laughs> I'll take a stab at it. Um, I'm probably the most versed on on both those sides. Um, the coordinate, uh, excuse me, the corridor adaptive ramp metering. It's called CARM. Uh, is the approach we're going to be taking um, has a requirement to know essentially the volume entering into the ramps. So uh, the base of the ramp, what's called our excessive queue, and then our passage detector, the volume exiting our ramp. And then they estimate the, the queue and the numbers that are there, making sure that they're discharging appropriately as that's there. They don't take into consideration a wait time in the current algorithms. Um, I think if as this technology continues to develop um, and if there is a need to to truly understand and say, well, uh, we estimate it's a four minute wait time, but to then verify that, yes, it is a four minute wait time. I think that's where this technology comes into place. But the current algorithm does not require this type of data input. Okay. It would be great for as a as a back check against it. But that's really what it would be as a support, not a, a, an input. Thank you. Any further questions for Susant and the team? All right, thank you everyone for attending uh, and I would like to thank the uh, 
the Technical Advisory Committee for uh, helping to guide this research. And uh, we will uh, have this, uh, um, this recording uh, on our website in a little bit. And uh, we will get uh, links out to anyone who, uh, who has something. Uh, yes, Scott, you had a question. Just trying to figure out how to do the clap of hands. That was not the right button. <laughs> but yeah, I would agree. Thank you, everyone, for this. This has been a really cool project to be a part of. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.